Primary care providers are busy people. It's simply just not possible to perform a full neurologic examination on most patients given clinical time constraints. This is why I'm going to show you a fast and simple set of exam maneuvers to help you rapidly assess patients with common complaints including problems walking or falls and abnormal movements or tremors. This is the 2 minute movement exam. The 2 minute movement exam is the following. Rest, hands up, finger to nose, taps, tone, and gait. This can be remembered with the mnemonic, red, hot, fiery tamales taste good. Let's go through the whole thing first, and then we'll break it down piece by piece. Great. Okay, bring your hands up. Okay, hands down. Right hand, finger to nose, back and forth. Other hand, finger to nose. Okay, right hand and big finger taps. Left hand, big finger taps. Right foot, toe tap. Relax your whole arm. We're going to pick up and stabilize here. Super relaxed. At the wrist. Open and close your other hand. Okay, other arm. Nice and relaxed here. Open and close the other side. Okay, I'm going to pick up your leg. So, under leg. Okay, other leg. Okay, cross your arms over your chest, stand up. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Come back. Keep coming. That's two minutes. Now let's break down each component of the two minute movement exam, starting with rest. Start big picture. How much is the patient moving spontaneously? How often are they blinking? How animated is their face? How much do they spontaneously gesticulate with their hands when they're talking? This is also a great time to evaluate for a rest tremor. Next, ask the patient to raise their hands up. This is our opportunity to see if there's any asymmetry in how quickly the arms rise. We'll be evaluating for abnormal posturing, and certainly this is our opportunity to look for any abnormal movements exacerbated with posture, like a postural tremor. Don't forget that sometimes it takes altering the posture like this to really bring out what we're looking for. Lastly, take a look at the difference between this and this. Did you notice how the second tremor took a little bit of time to emerge? Well, this is a great example of an emergent tremor seen here on the right. This is actually a form of a rest tremor, not so much a postural tremor. Emergent tremors can also be seen while the patient's walking and are more commonly seen in diseases causing rest tremor like Parkinson's disease. Now ask the patient to alternate between touching their nose and your finger. This shouldn't be done with speed, but rather one smooth and continuous movement. This is where we'll be evaluating for dysmetria, which means missing the target, or a kinetic movement, like a kinetic tremor, meaning a tremor of action. Next, ask the patient to repetitively tap their fingers and toes. The key here is to ask them to perform the movements quickly, but while keeping the amplitude or size as large as possible. What we're looking for here is bradykinesia. Bradykinesia is not solely slow motor speed. Bradykinesia is also decrementing or reduction in the amplitude as they attempt to speed up the movement and continue it, and interruptions or loss of the rhythm of the taps. If you've got extra time, ask for hand opening and closing as well, particularly if they're suffering from certain arthritic changes making finger taps difficult. 
Testing a patient's tone is one of the more difficult tasks involved here. It's certainly a skill to be developed, particularly because you'll need to differentiate between peritonia, or difficulty relaxing, which is a common finding in elderly patients, and true rigidity. Rigidity is a resistance felt to passive motion. Rigidity is different from spasticity in that it is felt in both directions of movement, or flexion and extension, and it is not velocity dependent, meaning you can feel it if you're moving the extremity fast, or slow. We find it's best to test for rigidity at the elbow, wrists, knee, and ankles. Notice in this clip I'm asking the patient to open and close their contralateral hand. This is an activating maneuver that can bring out subtle rigidity and should be used if you don't feel rigidity initially. Last but not least is gait testing. Start by having the patient rise from the chair with their arms folded over their chest. How do they do this? Do they fail to get out of the chair because they can't bring their nose over their toes? Do they have to push off? Do they stagger backwards back into the chair? Next, watch them walk down a hall back and forth a couple of times. Things we're looking for are base, or how wide apart their feet are from each other. Is it a wide base? Is it a normal base, about shoulder width apart? Stride length. How well do they swing their legs? A proxy for stride length is heel strike. Does it look like the heels are striking the ground appropriately, or are they taking short or shuffly steps? Are they swinging their arms at all, or is there some asymmetry there? Next, how do they turn? Is the turn quick and fluid, or is it on block? On block turns are actually not multi-step turns, although that is important to note. On block means turning as a unit. So instead of the head leading the body, the head, neck, body, and feet all turn together. And that's it, the two minute movement exam. It's rest, hands up, finger to nose, taps, tone, and gait. I really appreciate your time learning this and I think your patients will too.